So within Novo Nordisk, we have defined five different QBD elements, which I will describe briefly during this presentation. I will uh, spend most of the time on the element which is related to method understanding and how we can use modeling in order to obtain this. Uh, if we start with the first element, which we call the analytical target profile, then you can regard this as a user requirement specification, which will give clear directions for the analytical development. It should also ensure an agreement between the stakeholders, the people developing the method, the people using the method, and the people using the result from the method. I would like to stress that this uh, should be regarded as, as internal targets we don't think they have any regulatory relevance whatsoever. So we have different types of targets here. We have, of course, targets related to the performance of the method, uh, which you typically find in the validation, such as accuracy, linearity, limit of quantitation, etc. But we also have user aspects like handling, safety, we have customer aspects like number of reruns that can be tolerated, cycle times, and so on. And we have sample aspects like which matrices we may encounter and what ranges we have our analyzing, and so on. This is what it may look like. It's just a big word table where we have listed the parameters that we believe are relevant for the certain type of analysis, and we give typical targets for these parameters. And then the users, before they define their analytical target profile, or while doing this, adjust these targets. Uh, during the development process, we evaluate these targets against data, and data we typically get from the validation of the method that we do before phase one, and the validation, the final validation we do before phase three, that is the full ICH type of validation. And then in addition to this, we have, of course, feedback, feedback or input from the customers and the users. We have a special focus on the intermediate precision because that impacts the specifications and the number of out-of-specification results we get. So in order to estimate the intermediate position, of course, we have data from the validation of the method. But we have also included control samples in our analysis. So we have a sample with a known content, which we include each time we run an analysis. So that's the second source to estimate the intermediate position. And then we have a third source, and that is the stability studies that we do during the different phases. So, for example, if we have a content method, we could monitor how the content decreases over time. And then we fit the function to this decrease. But then we will have a difference or a residual between this fitted function and experimental points, as you can see over here, and this difference then should give one estimate of the intermediate precision. So hereby we have three different estimates of intermediate precision, which we could pool in order to get a really good estimate. 